So what we have here is a cryo cooler or a cryo pump. It is a refrigeration unit which gets so cold at the tip that it can liquefy air, nitrogen, and oxygen. And I hope to make my own liquid oxygen for my rocket projects. Now these normally go for like $1,500 or more. So I was really lucky to find this one for only $200. It was actually sold as a movie prop. So, I mean, it was worth getting for only like one-fifth the price because then I have a chance to take one apart. And it might even work, so who knows. Now we have two connectors on either side. And they look like they're uh, connectors that won't drip. So there's probably water in there. This has green around the connector and this has red around the connector. So this is probably get the output of a uh, water sheet to help cool the, the pump. And then this around it is just a big stainless steel block, I guess like an insulator or something. I don't know, we'll find out. But this thing is so heavy. That's a good amount of weight right there, that's for sure. Now that is cool. I still don't see any model number, but oh well. Now, these are sometimes used for generating very low temperatures to liquefy gases. However, sometimes they're also used to clear out a vacuum. With this, you can see there's a vacuum connector on there. So this would have been at the bottom of a high vacuum vacuum chamber, and any stray molecules of air inside the vacuum chamber that the pump can get out will liquefy onto this, and so it can actually drop the vacuum down really low. You know what? I bet this uh, end cap comes off too. Well, I can pick it up. That's so, oh, it's so nice. It's like half the weight off of it already. So that's cool. That's odd. What's that on there? Oh. Okay, that's strange. Oh, it's so much lighter. So good. I was afraid it was going to be that same white afterwards. I don't see to be any brand names on it, but I am seeing a few scratch marks. There's Q.376. On here it's marked with marker D0823. I.T388. 2.T371. And those are added by like a vibrating pen to it's just someone manually did that with their hand, so I'm not quite sure about that. That's odd. 
Oh, it's because this is cut higher than this. So this side's heavier. How fascinating. That right there was worth a couple bucks because that's pretty cool stainless steel. Now this is a mystery. So I guess this is uh, spring loaded. Oh, that is not opening up, that's for sure. Actually, that looks like it's a plastic plug. So, let's pop this off. I fully expect water to squirt out because there's probably still water from the coolant system in there. Weird. Or not. Some odd mechanism in here. Oh. Weird. Not quite sure what to make of that. Now this one connector, which has some lettering on the perimeter. DM five five O D zero three P Y. Might go more, but I'm not sure. There's three pins. One, two, three, and on the bottom it says Deutsch, so it's made in Germany. And then we have this, which looks like it has a hole drilled in it and then covered with something, so that's odd. That might be the helium fill-up line, because a lot of these are basically just electrically driven Stirling engines filled with helium, so that's interesting. You know what? This is the right size. Look at that. Let's see what's in here. Oh. Now that's odd. I guess this will be submerged in liquid in there. Because it has a seal. Well, I'm not going to get anywhere just by looking at it. So, and I don't want to accidentally fry anything. So we might as well take it apart, and then... So this lock washer is busted also. So this has already been taken apart by somebody. That's obvious. And then this lock washer is snapped. But this one... Oh, it has cracks on it too. That's a shame. Oh, weird. Okay. Oh no, I didn't mean to do that. So I guess this is the the main side of the cryo cooler. Oh, okay, so that's just that that just is really ambient. So I guess this is already taken apart. And I guess that is off. Well, I guess it's just turned into a full teardown. So that's okay. Smells like antifreeze, so that's interesting. Now that looks like a jet for letting the inlet, the cold water, come in. But I do not see where the hot water comes out. That's very odd. Oh, it might be there. A little jet there. It's 
metal. That's metal. It's like a ceramic of some sort, so obviously this turns. Oh, there's also a jet over here. Or well, perhaps it's a set screw, I'm not sure. Right there. Two screws holding this top part to the bottom part. in there so this has definitely been opened outside of a clean room environment before this there's a lot of junk in there and that thermal couple goes down to here oh no 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 and it goes to here odd very odd but there's no other mechanical connection to this so I can seal this back up occurred to me this is a ceramic piston and this is a ceramic piston also and this is a sterling pump after all there's a little gasket in here which this rubs on and then there's also some black stuff which I didn't realize I was wiping off you can see it there on the inside there so this has definitely been running a long time and has a very long history of use so slowly. There we go. Oh! Finally, a label. Oh, do you see that? thumbprints and I'm wearing gloves so I wouldn't put thumbprints on that so someone's obviously been inside here but again it's only $200 Robertson Company interesting so 240 volts AC 72 RPM that's good to know because I probably would have tried 120 volts you know, I'm actually pretty happy that I took this apart because, well, first of all, it didn't have any helium in it, as far as I can tell. But most of all, since somebody uns most likely unskilled had this apart, then it'd be a good idea to open it up and see what's going on. Because I would hate for it to actually be working, but just the person put it back together wrong, which always happens, at least what I've experienced. It seems like it always happens. And then it goes crunch when I turn it on whenever just opening it up and finding an issue but I can fix it myself. 
before it causes any bad trouble. Interesting. So there's a little um, rubber covers over those screws. Okay. Weird. Okay. Hmm. Okay, so that's like a stepper motor. piece on there which is odd. A little spring to help I guess to yeah to allow it to couple onto that. No now that is a light. Holy hell. Oh oh that's the piston. Okay because I was really worried that these weren't moving. That's the piston. It doesn't move very much, but it does move. Hmm. Evidently, I totally forgot there was different types of cryocoolers, and this entire time I've been assuming that it's the kind of ones where they're just self-contained, and they just have to have a cooling jacket with cold water circulating through to cool, uh, to take away the heat. However, this cryocooler is the type that requires a helium compressor, and the connectors, which I thought would be for the cooling jacket, actually are for compressed helium. Now I probably could build my own helium, helium compressor using this pump, this compressor from an air conditioner unit from the Red Rooster Inn. Sadly, I, I had a bigger one, but it got covered in stuff and I forgot that it was in the basin of the Red Rooster and they just threw everything away. So I have the smaller one. Oh well, I mean, it was free. I can't complain. So I'm not sure if that thing works, but I'm not sure if this works either, so who knows. So first off, we have the, um, the cool compressed helium coming in through here. Represented by green. And now there's a hole that goes all the way back and it goes up. So helium can come in through here or can come in through the center hole on there. Now, this motor just acts as a valve, which, and I believe this is made of graphite, which explains why it'll be graphite, because it has to spin a lot right up against that. So, whenever it's oriented like that, it lets helium from the center hole into the side holes, which the side holes, I believe they all either they go to the middle or that, I'm not quite sure. But either way, they interact with up here and that pressure pushes the piston up and down and does the cryocooling, sterling cycle magic. But then, this rotates 90 degrees and now the, the helium from the two side holes can escape out. You can see how that's open like that. You can escape out and into the motor chamber. So first it sends compressed helium into this uh, piston chamber and then it rotates and let the, lets the helium decompress into the motor chamber where it comes out through there. And that makes a lot of sense because I was wondering why there were all these like really really well sealed up parts and I'm not quite sure what that would be, but who knows. So the real question is, does this work? Because these do look like they have some wear and tear, but they should still work. Just a question of this. And now that I know this took, takes a lot more equipment, that fills me with more confidence because if it was a standalone unit and somebody took it apart, it would have had to be broken to take apart, you know, because they, they pretty much would have broken it. Well, with this, if they didn't have the other parts, then they might have just taken apart for fun, kind of like what I'm doing. So that does give me hope that this thing still does work. Well, that's a bit embarrassing. My workshop is in such disarray 
that I can't find a multimeter anywhere. So let's just put this off until later because it was fun to know how the mechanics of it work. And so then I can see if that compressor pump works sometime. And plus I need to get this thing back together. And I would like to make this box into a carrying case. Because it is so cool. And it had water damage. So I ripped out all the cardboard and like lining on the inside. So it needs to be relined. I could, instead of having it over here, I could have it over there. That should be better. Let's do that. Cool. Now sadly this box just has a horrible mold smell to it so I'm just gonna spray with hydrogen peroxide because it just like as soon as you open it it just is like a big gust of nasty mold smell. shame too because the insides were pretty nice. You guys remember this as one of those the boxes that I see using for a toolbox in the basement. This wouldn't be such a good, a good, uh, well, okay. Oh, that cracked. Well, would you look at that? You know what? Let's skip this box. It's a piece of junk anyway. So the other box that I use for tools is fine, but that one, I just had it kind of empty with a couple small things and a couple tools and stuff and some zip ties. And I had it sitting on the floor of the basement and I didn't realize it got so wet. So when I opened it up, the, um, the cloth covering on the walls had turned from like a navy blue to a bright yellow and green. That's not a good sign. And then I started ripping it open and it had cardboard backing behind it and that just had like mycelium or whatever going all the way through. It was like, oh God. So I just kind of ripped it all out, threw it away and I have the box, but there was also some bits of wood that held it together and I ripped those out too. So I think the box has pretty much been structurally compromised. So I'll find something to do with that later. I might just remove the handle, add a brand new handle, maybe add handles on the side, put some wood in there, 
so hopefully the wood can help hold it together but enough of that because I'm still happy with this. I think that was still worth $200 because if I happen to get a compressor pump together working right, then I can always try to use this and I'll look up what kind of um, connector that is and so if I can get that and these connectors. Plus it's cool. I'm still gonna look out for other cryo coolers like ones that are all self-contained because those might be a little bit better but I'm not going to pay very much so I'm just going to keep an eye out for broken ones again because maybe they're not so broken after all well I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching see ya